Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop along with StarMobile.com. It is Wednesday night, the day before Thanksgiving. And uh, finally, this is my first day off since I want to say spring break, which was in March. <laughs> and, uh, a lot of people have had all the time in the world. I have, and I've been I've been working like crazy, uh, super long hours. There's technically a week where we were closed because the roof spray foam issue in a winter storm where we couldn't spray foam. Uh, but truth be told, I was still having to work then. So, uh, and then during the roof uh, phase when everything was shut down, I was the one there that was having to manage stuff. So yeah, I was longer hours than usual. But uh, nonetheless, trying to take advantage of some time that I've got here, uh, especially since I found out this weekend that I would have off to make significant progress, is supposed to be frigidly cold. So uh, that is great, but this is something I want to do. There's a couple of things holding me up from putting the engine in and putting the dash back in the truck. And that's simply because there would be things that are much easier to do with the engine not in the truck and the dash not in the truck, right? So let me turn around. And grab box number one. I'm gonna drop it down. That's right, 2001 Ram stepping up the game with uh, an AEM performance gauge. You're sitting there, you're thinking, okay, AEM aftermarket gauge. It's not a diesel. It's probably not, you know, trans temp. Maybe oil temp. Well, it seems a little overkill. Um, what could it be? You know, it's we built a pretty nasty, naturally aspirated engine, right? So we surely would have talked about force induction by now. And all those points are 100% correct. This is an air fuel ratio gauge, right? That's that's all it is. It's nothing more. We're not doing anything crazy to the truck. Uh, this will allow us to monitor it. Again, what we did with the cam, it's borderline. Uh, we, you know, the factory stuff should work <laughs> with some tweaking. Uh, it's actually borderline. You could probably run it with no tune. Uh, but it would be much, much advised and in your best interest to tune. And that's where this comes in. That's honestly the purpose this will be serving for us. So uh, I've had this sitting around for quite some time. Picked it up from Summit, of course. A little prices vary. Uh, sometimes you can catch like uh, quarterly type promotions. Maybe get this for sub 200, typically from Summit. You're looking right around the 200 mark. I checked right before recording, it's 211. I feel like I paid a little less than that, but uh, don't hold me to it. The part number, again, this stuff is all universal, so what you see here, it'll work on your truck, your car. It uh, doesn't care what type of vehicle you've got. It's pretty much going to be good to go. Their part number is 30-4110. Again, I will have all of this linked down below. Uh, but that gives you a good idea of what is involved now. One of the other reasons I delayed this, this is clearly the top of the box, right? I'm going to come in, I'm going to do you solid. We're just going to reveal the gauge right there. So, number one, is it stylistically ideal for me? No, uh, it's not necessarily because it's black bezel and black face. That part's great. Uh, it's the readout. It mirrors what you see on the box, the red LED. Not a fan. I wish you could tweak that. I don't think there's any way to do so with this. Um, that said, this is one of the most widely regarded and respected brands in AFR readings. Obviously, you can get some stuff cheaper. Mixed results when you go that route. This is kind of quality across the board. And uh, when you pay just a little bit more to get it done right once, I suppose I can live with a red LED. Who knows, maybe it'll grow on us, but uh, if we could just tweak that, you know, if it was RGB, and you could dial in something to either match your factory illumination uh, or your favorite color or whatever's easiest on your eyes or best visibility in the daylight, that would be awesome. That would be a step up. But when I was taking a look at this the other day, because like, I got tired of uh, sanding stuff and I wanted a break, I came in and I opened it up from this side and I tried, uh, not super hard, but I did try to find out what this is. And every little thing I watched on this, everything I saw, every Google phrase and keyword search I attempted to string together to answer this question came up moot. So if you take nothing else away from this, I want you on board with a quest to figure this out. Some of you may know, maybe I'm like living under a rock and have no idea what's going on. But uh, this is a nice little Easter egg. Again, most people, you're going to come in, you're going to open it from this side, you're going to have your gauge, you're going to rip everything out, and you're done. You throw the box away, or you keep it, whatever. But you never come and open it from this side. Now, check this out. It looks similar to the top, but when we open it... Uh-huh. So now, I would assume that this is probably like the founder of the company type of a thing. <laughs> but... 
It could also be something more simplistic and comical than that, but I honestly don't know. I tried, I figured, you know, like they'd mention it, you know, in their About Us on the website or something. I never see anyone actually open this side of the box to say, oh, hey, that's so-and-so, or ha-ha, you know, that's that popular meme. So I legitimately don't know, but I do know it's here, and it bothers me not knowing. I did attempt, and I, I came up empty, so maybe the knowledge is tucked away somewhere on a forum. Maybe it's tied in with, like, Honda and Acura people all know who this is. I really don't know. So if you know who this man is and why he's here, please let me know because I hate not knowing things. All right, so got a little bit of paperwork here. I uh, got some uh, pretty decent instructions, I would say. Again, it's not super complex what we're installing, but uh, kind of have it folded up, full sheets of papers, not color or anything, but it kind of walks you through like custom setups and unique applications, things like that. And of course, your basics. So, first thing first, we have the O2 sensor. This is from Bosch, and if you're thinking that is a ridiculously short harness, well, fear not, you know, that's gonna make sense here in a second. Uh, one of the key components and one of the big costs in an AFR setup is, in fact, your O2 sensors. A lot of times, if you find a gauge you like, you're comparing it to AAM, you'll know, like, hey, I'm saving 50 bucks. Well, guess what? They're not including an O2 sensor, right? So then you have to go out. Uh, you'll probably be on the weekend, and you won't be able to get it, and it just turns your, turns your day into a mess. Now, this right here is a very long harness. I want to say 8 feet, and if we take a look at the plug here, we'll note that it seems to made up with this. <laughs> it's reduced down to, what, a 6-pin connector, I believe? This is essentially what we're going to run from the O2 sensor to the gauge. So yes, this is short. No, it's not going to reach into your vehicle and connect to the gauge. Unless you mounted it like face down in the floor pan, then sure, <laughs> do that. But uh, for us, this is what I wanted out of the box. This is why I'm making this video so I can go run this, play around with routing, uh, kind of get an idea of what we want to do. Now, something cool that you would typically pay more for, if it's even an option from other uh, manufacturers, is this. Let's say that you actually love the black gauge face, but you want the silver trim ring. Swap them out. Let's say that you despise the black gauge face and you want a white gauge face. There it is. It's all included. I think there's also uh, maybe another face plate in there. But the bottom line is you have options. That's not extra. We didn't option this out. That's just included standard, which again, I can appreciate. Right here, this is kind of our uh, four pin connector there that'll plug into the back of the gauge. Again, uh, already loomed up and everything. Pretty decent length there as well. Uh, right here, this is nice. They include, because a lot of people aren't going to have this stuff, all your uh, splice points. They also included an O2 bone, so you can have that welded up. If you can't weld, you don't have a welder, your buddy's out of commission, whatever it might be, you can take that. The shop's probably going to tell you they have something they want to use. But if they don't, or if they didn't have one, you know, maybe you're going down to Frank up the road and he just installs glass packs on old trucks. You have an O2 bung, he doesn't have to order one, run around town looking for one. Saves time, everyone's happy. So, uh, let's now shut this into the box again. It's like the milk carton mystery, right? I don't know who <laughs> that is. I want to say, like, common sense would dictate to me that it's either A, the founder, B, someone important or integral to the company's history, or C, just something funny, uh, A and B being my, my preference. But uh, anyway, right here, let's get to the uh, good stuff if we can. All right, spared you the trouble of me having to spin the nuts off the back here, which I do actually like those as well. But uh, here you can see again, black face, black bezel, standard for installation. Uh, we can tweak it. Again, depending on the vehicle, what you're trying to match, what your color preferences are, you go to town. This thing is extremely lightweight, which that's good. Uh, particularly in our case of a heavy truck, it's not a big advantage. Uh, but if you're trying to get uh, AFR readings on your race car, you're not sinking a ton of weight into this thing. So that's a, always a plus. Right there, we've got the business side of the gauge, the 6-pin and the 4-pin. We have got the part number. Uh, 358460 again I believe this would be the kit uh, note the contrast here between the gold uh, is pretty nice and I actually appreciate the knurling on this I'm spinning this off for good reason you'll see why in just a second number one that's how the gauge will mount but number two and perhaps more important there's uh, some information there for you so Bosch 
LSU of 4.9 only. Again, that's telling you in the event that maybe I know a lot of people buy these used right off of eBay or flea market type of deal. You're probably not going to get the guy's O2 sensor. Sometimes they're lazy. Sometimes they think, oh, I don't need to give it up. Uh, other times it's like rusted and seized and they can't get it out. So a lot of people that will acquire these will do so. They'll bring in or they'll have something existing. You've got to run the correct Bosch part number there. Uh, in order for this to plug and play and provide accurate readings. But so, uh, all said, that's about it. I'm not going to go into a science fair mode here on the AFR readings. Again, honest to gosh, what this is going to be used for on the truck is quite simply tuning. Uh, it's going to be very, very important for dialing in the tune. And then uh, as somebody that's somewhat into this stuff, it's going to be kind of cool to down the road monitor. Uh, it's just to me like a gauge. It's an insight to the engine. You know, you don't know the oil pressure. You have a gauge, you know the oil pressure. You can diagnose things before they happen, hopefully. <laughs> All right. And with this, with the AFR, if we ever start having stuff go down, whether it be two weeks, you know, into driving the truck or seven years and we see the AFR isn't quite what it usually is, that tells us, hey, something's not quite right. Let's investigate it as soon as we possibly can. So that is what we've got. Again, just just north of 200 or so is what you're typically going to pay, well, at least from Summit. Again, shop around if you would like, but uh, that's my preferred vendor. What I'm going to do now, though, we're going to drop another part in on this. And uh, this, of course, with the uh, AEM gauge, right, we need somewhere to mount it. No, I'm not going to drill a hole in the floor and put the bezel there, although that would be an option if you're going for something unique and never done. But uh, what I opted to do, obviously, second-gen Rams, most people are going to think of a gauge pillar pod, right? Two or three gauges, two plus your tweeter, whatever. Um... While I typically am inclined to do that, that's what I do with the Mopar 10, that's what I plan to do with the older cars. On the truck, given that we would only be running an AFR gauge at this point, uh, number one means we only need one, which is you know not an issue. You can plug the hole, you can order in a single gauge pillar pot, whatever. Uh, but with the red LED, I don't like that aesthetically. I don't want that hanging up off my A pillar. So your other kind of pre-existing mounting point uh, for these second gen rams would be what's in this box what's in this box is from auto meter gauge works it is their part number 15012 typically you're going to pay about 50 bucks i would say two to four sales a year auto meter will put a pretty significant discount on their stuff that is when i recommend you pick this stuff up and uh, I'm sure many of you, especially if you're familiar with second-gen Rams or just gauge pods and add-ons from the aftermarket, you know exactly what this is. For everyone else, you're thinking, that's not a pillar pod. <laughs> like, where is this going to go? Well, take a look at it. You'll note there's a cutout here. You'll note there's a, kind of a funky cutout there. You'll note there's a big crest here. What if I told you this arch would have a steering wheel in front of it? This would be for a tilt lever, uh, this would be for turn signals, and this circular shape would be for your ignition ring. Then you've probably placed it, this would be, I believe, our uh, <laughs> warning lights, right? Hazard flashers. That's right, this is going to mount on top of the steering column. Uh, I think I mentioned this when we were taking that all apart, right? Uh, I think there's some double-sided tape, some push pins, we'll have to see. This might have to be modified a little. But uh, I really wish now I wouldn't have spun these back on. <laughs> it's, uh, that's just going to impede what we're trying to do here. But uh, the stuff like this tends to be hit and miss. Some people love it, thinks it's the bee's knees. Other people are disgusted with it, ultimately build their own. Some people just come in and cut or modify this to work in accordance with what they're trying to accomplish. But essentially, we're not off to a good start because this is not even going in the bezel. <laughs> it's, uh, Oh Lord, you know, two and one sixteenth, you know, half of an eighth. I don't know why that's an issue for people. So that's disappointing. Uh, obviously we hadn't test fit this ahead of time, but if you didn't know, this would essentially drop plug and play. It's not to mount like that. Now, could we do it? We could probably rig something up, but this should tuck in to this cavity. So this sits flush bezel against the ridge right there. And, uh, 
<laughs> as you can see, the gauge clearly does not fit. So, as with most things, uh, and you gotta think, one of the number one gauges, I don't care if you're diesel or gas, that people would be adding on in a singular instance would be AFR. Uh, I've got some actually, you know what, we may call their bluff on this. Uh, where's the one I can get to the easiest? Let me pause this. I've got some auto meters here on the on the table. And, uh, they're behind the charger's gauge cluster. I'm going to see if it plugs in. And if it doesn't, we know that this has seriously got some issues. So one second, we'll investigate that. I think it'll be well worth our time. Man, what a mess we have here. It's just like the rest of the shop right now. <laughs> so, anyway, I uh, reached back over there, ruffled some papers, pulled this out. This is the backing to the gauge. What is it? Well, as I promised, it's an auto meter. It's an ES. This is going to be sort of like a orangey red illumination. Not that anyone cares. Bottom line, it's a 2 and 1 16th. It should drop and plug and play in these openings, particularly an auto meter gauge pot. All right, this could be an auto meter AFR. It could be exhaust temperature. It could be oil pressure temperature or oil temperature. It could be trans temp. It could be anything. And when we come in right here, you would think that this would slide in. And we're off to a much better start, to their credit, but just something as simple as the decals here, right? Your uh, warnings, your part numbers, slow it down. <laughs> and uh, we will wedge it in just because we want to get a good look at it. And this, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to go ahead and say, is a poorly, poorly designed product all right we've got this much of an auto meter gauge still visible i mean that's that's a good you know quarter to half of an inch there and uh check it out why does it not slide back now that we're past the decals we'll look the stud it is hitting on the back of the gauge pod uh do you want to cut the back of the gauge pod here and you know not have plastic to kind of clean it up and provide a clean install not on a steering column you don't. If this was an A-pillar that went in and no one would ever see it, sure, whack the back off, slide it through, make sure you don't ground out into the uh, you know, uh, A-pillar or something. But right here, I mean, this is an auto meter gauge and an auto meter pod. And that's poorly designed. So what I can see right here, you've got two options. Number one, you would just have this surface flush, basically. Option number two, you need to pull that up. You also need to widen it. And then the arc at the back, you know, instead of that coming down sort of like a street elbow type of a thing, you know, you should just come back and be flush, you know, kind of 90 degree it. Uh, that's really stupid. Just incredibly stupid. Now, the good news is the studs on this are significantly longer, uh, the mounting studs, than on the AEM, but gotta be careful I do not want to uh, pull that off I have the gauge go flying so uh, case in point let me kind of get back through this mess here if we go stud to stud right you can kind of see what I'm talking about so that is going to be a saving grace in terms of potential interference with the back wall of the pillar pod uh, that orange there is just the sticker from the auto meter but uh, man that's uh that's not not how would want things to be auto meter uh, there's a reason that uh, I do some things with other gauge companies now and it's little things like this so I don't care where this is made whether it's America China Japan Tokyo Germany it's irrelevant it doesn't fit a 2 and 1 16 gauge should fit in a 2 and 1 16 hole particularly with your own product line so if you're looking for a solution for your second gen Ram, Dakota Durango, Jeep Grand Cherokee, whatever it might be, this is an interesting option. It's going to be for most people, especially if you want to keep something like this kind of discreet. You're not going to broadcast to the world, you know, whether you're a sleeper or you just don't like the aesthetic of it. You don't want the red LED up on an A-pillar. This is a really good option. I mean, it's a great mounting point. I'll give them that. But it needs to be designed to fit the gauge and to fit the gauge properly. Um... We don't even have any clips on the back. That's another source of potential interference. <laughs> but, uh, bottom line, I was afraid. I was not thinking this would be an issue. I was thinking some of the other mounting points might be janky and require modification. Now I'm very concerned about that entire thing. So that sucks. But uh, 
what I'm going to do is box this back up, get it out of sight and out of mind until I have to deal with it. And uh, currently I can't because the dash again is not in the truck. So what I'm going to happily do instead is take this really long, which I want to say it's an eight foot harness. It probably tells us in here. I guess since the video has gone on, we'll just, yeah, right here. We're going to come in and uh, part numbers again. This is nice stuff when you've got a part number and you can go and, you know, either call up your vendor or AEM direct and see where you can get it from. But 35, 34, 41, that's going to be a part number for a 96 inch wide band LSU 49 Yugo, which again, that's going to be our Bosch sensor replacement cable. So 96 inches is what? Eight feet. That's going to be just fine with me. Then we've got a three foot uh, Yugo replacement cable as well. So this is what I want to take to the truck and uh, see if I can find somewhere to route it, whether we come up, you know, through a trans tunnel point all the way up to the firewall and then I just want to play around with that. I don't know that I'll include it here. I'll probably just hit on that when we actually install it. It'll keep the video a little shorter for you. <laughs> so, like I said, you know, this isn't, you know, when you buy stuff for, you know, a 50 year old muscle car, you can kind of understand fitment issues. You know, there's a very good chance in those cases that a guy who made a template, it fit his car and he tweaked it and it dialed in perfectly for him. But then on yours, it's just slightly different. You know, it's off like an eighth of an inch here, a sixteenth there, shaved here, trimmed there type of a thing. Production standards on these trucks, we're talking like 94 to 2001 for second gen Rams, up to 02 for our three quarter and one ton friends. That shouldn't happen, especially, again, we don't even know of issues here in terms of mounting that, but this part, that's nothing to do with the truck. This doesn't matter if it's a Ford, a Chevy, a Toyota, anything. If a 2 and 1 16th gauge doesn't fit here, that's a fail. If your own 2 and 1 16th gauge will get in the bezel in a tight fit, that's okay. But when the studs are going to bottom out and leave this much of the gauge forward exposed, that's just... There's no excuse for that. Um, I hate bagging on people when I don't have to, but there's literally no excuse for that. Uh, that's just pathetic. Uh, 2A have designed it, uh, whether it was done on you know CAD software or whatever, whoever engineered this at their desk, uh, and then to have not tested it. And if you tested it and found the issues, which I assume you would, correct it. Don't put it into production and correct it. That's why you prototype things. And when you don't test, and I mean, I couldn't even imagine this working out. If you have these dimensions correct, you know, from your own gauge line and you have the depth here articulated and you're going to go off the center points, that should red flag. The software should have told the person at the desk, like, no, not compatible, have to adjust. And uh, to have that failure point, a real world failure point, and then send this out to a customer at what I would consider a premium price tag. I don't respect that. I don't appreciate that. And uh, I, by gosh, will call it out because I spent 50 bucks on that and that's disappointing. So uh, if I was wanting to make my own that fit perfectly, I wouldn't have picked this up. And when I spend $50 on this, I do so without the intention of modifying it to make it fit correctly. So that sucks. Uh, the good news is this is really nice and I'm excited to get it installed and get the truck tuned and have it as a, a valuable asset moving forward. But I uh, can't recommend this guy. We'll see if we run into any other issues. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's super minor. Uh, but the bottom line is you should not run into these issues when you're bench testing something. So uh, pretty, pretty sad there on auto meters front. But uh, that's it. That's what we brought in. We got the AEM AFR gauge uh, and we got, we opted for the uh, auto meter pillar, you know, steering column pillar, uh, steering column pod, whatever you want to call that piece of plastic junk uh, as our mounting point. And we will make that work because again, I prefer that much over an A pillar. If we do anything crazy to the truck, if I want to add another gauge, we'll probably go that route and uh, see how it goes. But I'm glad auto meter makes this. I'm glad they have it on the market and offer it. But uh, when we go to those links, let's make sure things fit because then when you ship that out to the end user and we all come across the same point, the same issues, correct it, apologize, send out free samples, exchange it, do something. But I'm pretty sure the length of time this has been on the market, 
that's not going to happen. So maybe it's the first they've heard of it. That's usually the feedback you get from people uh, when you confront them with their engineering errors. Oh, we've never heard of that before. <laughs> and, uh, and you go online, forums, you know, investigate stuff, watch some videos, and you have a hard time believing that. So uh, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but uh, again... Looks like we're going to have to play with that, but I'm going to quit rambling and uh, eagerly go over here see if we can route that thing. But uh, Ram Revival, we're still kicking. Hope everyone's going to have a great weekend. Uh, hopefully, again, this will be way later, but I uh, hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. And uh, on that note, off to the truck I go, trying to get my mind away from poor fitting aftermarket parts. And we'll call it a day. So uh, you can find us on LoneStarMopars.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. With that said, if you have run this, if you ran an AFR gauge, whether it's AM or not, where did you mount your gauge and why? If you happen to do the same thing we're doing with the steering column pod, did it fit? Did you have the same issues? Is this like a freak deal? Has the mold shifted, you know, and you bought yours six years ago and it was perfect? Uh, similarly, if you have their single, double, or triple pillar pods, how did they fit? Were they great? Plug and play? Were they also an issue for you? Uh, let me know down in the comments section. That will be valuable information for anyone proceeding forward. Because again, if you could buy parts that just work as they're intended to without having to modify them, you save yourself a lot of time and headache and ultimately get to enjoy your vehicle. So, with that said, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, test fit that thing, and uh, I will catch you back here for more action from the shop. <laughs>